everyone, and welcome, welcome to, to class. class. My name is Joan Whitson. And I'm Erica Bowserman. And we're with the Early Learning Coalition of North Florida. And I brought my brain today, so this is really good. We're all ready for class. Today's video is focused on promoting literacy to preschoolers. Today's topic is incorporating dictation and storytelling into the classroom. The class domains that this activity covers are first, regard for student perspectives, this allows for student expression and student autonomy and leadership. The second is concept development. This provides a chance for children to be creative and make connections to the real world. Then there's quality of feedback, which involves giving specific back and forth feedback and encouragement provided during the process and praise for having a task completed. And then finally, language modeling. This involves asking open-ended questions and repetition and extension, and some advanced language could be used. Plus, this is the perfect activity to promote writing and understanding the concept of what makes a story. Erica, tell us more about this activity. I'd be happy to. If this is your first experience with group dictation, or you are a veteran like me, remember <laughs> children are natural storytellers mm -hmm. who are engaged and excited to see their words take shape on paper. The best part of dictation is that no two stories are alike and the same, even with the same topic in different classes. You will be delighted, <laughs> amused, and amazed. I once had a student who told me in a dictation on family that, quote, my father is very hairy oh, no. and when he <laughs> showers, his hair clogs up the drain and my mother does not like cleaning it, end quote. Oh and this was posted outside in the hallway, and the father was absolutely mortified. All right, so taking dictation requires you to listen. Okay, listen. Record, gently scaffold students along the way. Gentle scaffolding requires that you choose questions and comments with care and to prompt what event comes next in the story. Now, children will repeat something that another classmate had said, so you need to sort of redirect them so you don't have, for example, every zany zoo animal eating every other animal. All right, so I am going to use this group dictation on uh, zany zoo animals by BPKC. And this provides you a chance for you to model many writing behaviors, including handwriting, letter formation, matching sounds to letters to spell words, spacing between words and sentence formation. I even use punctuation when appropriate, like the period. So now I'm going to read the Zany Zoo Animals. So and this is actually when you did it at Brighton Day Academy yes, a few weeks ago? right, with okay. VPK students. Okay. And these were VPK graduates, but also incoming VPK students from the three-year-old class. So we had a mixture of kids. Oh, I can't wait to see and what they, they wrote. And they were studying Zany Zoo Animals for a few weeks. So all I said was, okay, we're going to do Zany Zoo Animals. And then they raised their hand and they started telling me sentences okay. and if you notice when I read the sentences I have the child's name by each sentence because they love to see their names in print and then I said this so mm. an elephant is zany because it can't jump that's by Cameron a tiger can jump ride they live in Florida Ava a tiger was being friends with a rhino Nessa the elephant was sharing a beach ball with a squirrel an alligator can swim in the water and the koala can hang in the tree. A tiger had a friend and played basketball. You know tigers <laughs> play basketball. Sure. The lion looked in the pond like a mirror. Daniel remembered that I had read a story about a mouse who looks in the pond and sees a reflection like a mirror. Hey. All right. And the turtle went home to play with the kangaroo. Turtles can swim in the water. The giraffe was walking. The giraffe can't go to school. A hippopotamus can hiccup. Now, you know, our, one of our favorite stories is the hippopotamus, uh -huh. and he has a hiccuping problem. So Daniel he remembered, Hayes that. remembered that. The giraffe from Lion King, Simba was bigger. Simba was looking in the water, and it was a miracle. <laughs> Who knew it was a miracle? The giraffe ate some trees. The cheetah was eating ice cream with a giraffe. And then I said, all right, give me a good ending. Let's bring it on home. And Madison said, thank you for sharing our story. The end. I love it. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. So the takeaways are tap into prior knowledge. Yeah, and I could see that definitely when you do it along with the theme, mm -hmm. you're, you're reemphasizing something that they've already been studying. This is a perfect example of of all the animal facts and things that they remembered. Exactly. So you could do this with any theme, right? Any theme. Okay. You can do Mother's Day 
family, Father's Day, Valentine's, Easter, anything, any topic. The sky is blue, whatever they want to talk about. Okay, the next one is give them time to talk. Okay. I, be patient. If a student can't contribute, go to a few other kids okay. and come back and ask them the question again, and then they'll feel more comfortable. So it's kind of like take a turn and talk and take a turn and talk. Well, or, like I was thinking, well, what if a child, you know, they're really shy. I could yeah. see that happening, right? Sure. And they don't want to talk, or maybe they only say one word like zebra. So then I would say, okay, so tell me about what a zebra looks like. Um, I would maybe say that then they're black and white. Exactly. So then I would say back the zebra is black and white. Okay. And that would be your sense. I go, good <laughs> job. Yay. Very good. Very good. So you always encourage mm -hmm. it. And one thing you must remember is when you're writing this, this doesn't look this neat when I'm writing it because the children speak faster than okay. you can write. So I always quickly write it and then I might ask them to repeat it so I make sure that I get what they're saying correctly. And then afterwards, I recopied it. Okay, so, so this, this is the good no, copy. This is like really nice. <laughs> not so nice. Okay, so we did the um, pre-teach vocabulary when appropriate. So you already did we talk about that? Already? Not really. Not really. Okay. So I mean, I guess it's just a way to review exactly. um, the vocabulary, and maybe beforehand you might want. You, what would you do beforehand? Encourage them to or talk about some of the facts about right, the animals? Right, right, exactly. Get them talking? Yeah, or the teacher will have done that already and talked about that. And when you're dealing with um, three-year-olds or four-year-olds, you can still do this. Okay. Yeah, so I guess with a three-year-old, I wasn't going to ask you how it would yeah. it be like for them. Well, you have to think, you have to know is be mindful to record the genuine student oh. language and refrain from rephrasing or correcting the grammar. So Joan, if you're three, tell me about this tiger. And I might look at that and you know how two or three year olds would go, oh, yeah. the tiger's blue. Yeah, it is blue, <laughs> absolutely. And that's what we would write down. And someone in the class might say, no, it's not, mm -hmm. it's orange. And another thing on that topic about uh, rephrasing or correcting mm -hmm. grammar or spelling, Hayes said hippotamus, okay? And on the original one that I did, I wrote, I wrote hippotamus, I put it in quotes. However, I wanted you to know that I can spell hippopotamus. <laughs> okay, so that's why it's spelled correctly so there. you would write the, just the way that they said it. Exactly. Okay. So, and that's why you vary the length of dictation based on the children's age or their language skills. And also this strategy can be used for individual, small groups, or large groups because sometimes you have a large group they get antsy so that helps if you then read part of the story and then ask them to contribute so that you view and it gets them back into focus and redirect or you it. could just do this for center time as and well. you could like yes. with one-on-one -on -one, yeah. and those are going to be shorter and maybe only a few sentences mm -hmm. or two or three kids mm -hmm. and then that would work also okay awesome. okay and then as i could just see how and what about, can't you see how they evolved over the years? The yes, so <laughs> over the year you can, like I start in the beginning of the year and you take a dictation and you put it up on the wall and then you do these periodically and then you can see throughout the year how they've become more able to articulate their thoughts. They're more verbal. The ones that were shy are like, no, I want to do this, <laughs> I want to do this. And as a matter of fact, last week I went into a class mm -hmm. And I came in and a little girl said, are we doing a dictation today? I said, no, not today. But you can post these all throughout the year and it's amazing what, how far they go with their, and their ability to verbalize and articulate. And it's just great. They're so expressive and they love it. Well, well I just think this is the most fantastic activity and something so simple because all we needed was what? A, a paper and a marker and a marker <laughs> and that's and the kids creative minds exactly so I really hope that you'll um, incorporate this dictation and storytelling into your classroom I think you're gonna enjoy it you're gonna have a lot of fun and enjoy and thank yes. you for coming to thank class with you. us today see you next time bye, -bye. bye.